Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I got another exciting video for you today. This one actually came out of a situation that I faced recently when working with Airtable attachments field. And basically what had happened was there was a need to be able to update the Airtable attachments field and existing field with more attachments. So if it already had one, for example, it already had a photo, there was a need to be able to add more photos to that existing record. And I wanted to do this using Make and I got stuck on it for a while to really figure out exactly how to work with that attachments field, specifically how to update the attachments field without deleting the existing data, but adding new data on top of it. But eventually I was able to figure it out and that's exactly what I want to show you today. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so no buyer board today because we can get straight into building actually. It's a straightforward uh, setup. So let me just walk you through. So what I've done now is I've created a YouTube base, which I can uh, use for multiple videos uh, to demo all these uh, little nuances of working with uh, NoCo tools, Airtable, make everything. So what I have here is I have a reports uh, table and because the situation that I worked on was a reports table, so I just copy that here. And then I have this primary field or primary key, which is just an ID. It's just an auto number. So every time I add a new one, it will automatically get assigned an ID. And then we have the attachment field. And actually let me rename this to attachments because we are expecting multiple photos and you can name it photos or whatever you're going to store here. It could be documents. And I, what I've done is I've already added one photo here. So now the situation that I faced was that look up a record that already exists and then attach more photos to the photos field in it. And we can do that here. We can just click on the plus button mm. and then like browse uh, through your files and select a photo that's appropriate. And there we go. And then it's going to upload that file and attach it to this field. So now this one has two photos, but how do we do this uh, using make? So if our data is coming from another source, maybe your user is submitting it through some kind of an app or something like that. So we want to be able to keep the existing ones and then attach more to them. I don't really have a front end for this. So I'm just going to use fill out, which is super straightforward to connect to make. And what I've already done is the way it's going to work is I'm going to enter the location ID here, which is basically this ID. And then I'm going to attach a photo here, which we will then send to make. And then make will look up the record based on the ID and then update the attachments field. So that's the setup. So let's start by creating a make scenario. And I'm just going to create a new scenario here in my demos folder. And we are going to use the fill out setup here. So fill out has a watch new responses. Actually, let's just click on it and see. Uh, okay, so watch new responses is the only one. So select that and it's going to ask me to choose a hook. I don't have one yet, so I'm going to create a new one and I'll call it uh, photo upload hook. And I don't have the, let's see if this form is updated. It does show up already, which is nice. I haven't published it yet. So I'll just click on upload photos form and hit save. And it's going to do its thing. It's going to automatically connect it. It says, we read your mind, we attached this web hook automatically for you. So it's already connected to my fill out form, which is great. So let's just uh, submit one and see what we get. So I'm going to play run it once and go to fill out, hit publish and then open this form. And this time I'm just going to enter a location ID. So let's say location ID four, browse and select one photo from here. So let's just select this one and wait for it to upload. This is just acting as our front end. So click submit. There we go. So now if you look at make, we got, our, we got an input. So we got the answer. So location ID is four, and then we got a photo and it could be multiple photos as well, but for the sake of this testing, we'll just use the first one. And uh, I have some other things as well, which we, we don't really care about right now. So this is pretty good. So now what we need to do is we need to attach Airtable. And actually I need to go to my Airtable connections and let me save this, save. And let's rename it to Airtable attachments demo. There we go. And then let me go to my connections. Oh, save it. Okay, now let's look for Airtable. And I just want to reauthorize this one. Oh, this is, this is my old one. Let's, so let's reauthorize this one. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to give it access to everything, grant access, so I don't have to keep redoing it. Initially, I was doing one base at a time, just doesn't make any sense. And let's rename this to all access. Perfect. 
So now in my scenarios, if we, if we go back here, where were we in scenarios and my demos and we had the Airtable attachments demo. Awesome, so we're organized. And let's click on it. And now the next thing we're going to add is the Airtable. And first thing we need to do is search for records. So because we are adding the photo ID and a photo, we first need to uh, look for a record with that information. What we're going to do is select the base, which is uh, YouTube base. And the table is uh, reports table. And here to search, this is the output. So we can select both the things. We want both things coming back from it. But to actual search, we need to add a formula. And the formula is just going to be, so this is called ID. So I'm just going to say ID equals location ID. There we go. And let's run this, run this module only. Let's try location ID one. And let's see what we get. Okay, so it returned the ID and it also returned the attachment and it has two photos as you can see as you can see here it has two photos so that's exactly what we got back so now basically what will happen is we will enter the location id here attach the photo and then by the time we get to this part we will have the new photo as well as the old photos so now it is time to update so the next step is going to be again airtable update our record and same setup we will select uh, airtable all access okay continue I thought I already gave it all access, but I think it needs to update the permissions. Adabase, all current and future grant. Okay, there we go. And the base is going to be YouTube base and the table is going to be reports. And the one that we need to update is the record ID is going to come from right here in the ID in the Airtable get a record module. Okay, and now it is time to do the actual update, right? So the attachments. Now, the problem is initially what I was doing, and clearly a mistake, <laughs> totally forgot how update works. So you add an item, and I was just adding a URL, which is coming in from my fill out. So I took the URL, and for the file name, I took the file name. And I was hoping that this will just work out of the box because it's an update record module. But notice what happens. So let's run this, and let's go to fill out, and we need to... Let me update this on the ending. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the fill again button. There we go. And that is too broad. There we go. Publish and open. Okay, so now I'm going to look for location ID one and again, attach a photo. So da, da, da. let's see these AI generated. Let's see the third one open and let's see what we have in your table. So we still have two photos, so that's good. So now once I submit it, and uh, then make sure this is running. Okay, great. So let's submit it. Hey, if you're enjoying this tutorial, you might want to check out No Code University, where I have a ton of practical courses on similar topics, including Airtable and Zapier. You can learn everything you need to know to unlock high income opportunities in the no code and AI space. To get started, you can find the link in the description below. Now back to the video. So submitted, this goes through, boom, boom. It does the update and let's see what we get in Airtable now. Ha, huh, exactly. So it deleted my two photos and replaced it with the new one. So it didn't really update. It did update, but it replaced the existing data with the new data. So I, I can understand why it's doing that uh, because typically when you update, we're not, we need to send all of the data. We need to send the old data as well as the new data. Otherwise it's going to just overwrite it. So it makes sense what it's doing. So how do we, how do, we do that? So we can do that now because we have the new data coming in from here, as we saw. We have the new image in the answers here. And then we have the old data coming in from here. So as we saw in the answers here. So now all we need to do is we need to merge the two together to be able to keep the old one and pass in the new one. But the problem is, how do we merge? So we, if you look at the output here of the photos, so if you look at the attachments, each attachment or the attachments as a whole is an array of collections. So this is an array of collections. And then in here, let's see what we have in the answers. The photos is also an array of collections. So what we can do is we can merge the two arrays, right? And there could be a situation where you don't have an array like this coming in. Maybe you only have a URL and you don't really have an array. So let's assume that is a situation. Actually, let's start with the easy one first. Let's just assume we have an array the new array coming in and then we have the existing array. So let's try to merge the two. So that part is easy. So what we can do is we will go 
here. And instead of mapping it like this, we are going to turn on this and we are going to create our own array. So we have one array coming in from fill out. So that is the photos array. And then we have one array coming in from, from your table, which is the attachments array. We have two arrays. You can see this because you can see this open and close square brackets that indicates that this is an array. So what we can do is we can merge the two. So you literally just type in merge. Or if you don't remember, what you can do is you can go here to the arrays tab and click on merge. And then tell, it asks you, what are you merging? So in the first one, so you go, you move your cursor between this thing. And then here you can select the array coming in from fill out. And then for the second one, I just use my keyboard to move because it's hard to click here. For this one, I would select the attachments array. So now it's going to merge the two and then send the merged array over to Airtable. So let's hit OK. And let's try to run it now and see well, how far we get. So remember now I have one photo, which is this one. So I'm going to go here, fill again, and location ID one, and then browse. And let's go back to the original photo that I had, which was this one, open. Perfect, so I'm going to submit and let's see. So it went through and now if we go to YouTube, now we see two photos because this time we sent the merged array as you can see here in the in the attachments, it sent one and two. Actually, it's this one. So in the attachments, it sent one and two. So this is great. So that worked out nicely. But as I said, there could be a situation where the data that is coming in is literally just the URL of the image and not the whole the whole deal like we have here because fill out was nice enough to send us a uh, send us an array as we can see here it's a array of collections okay so let's assume that we didn't have the array fill out is sending us here so if you notice fill out sends us this array of collections so each collection in the array is a uh, collection of information about the photo so the URL and the file name so let's assume for the sake of this discussion that we didn't get this nice setup, which worked out nicely in the merge part. Let's say we only got the URL or something like that. So how do we create an array out of it? So again, we are going to go back to our array aggregator, which I've shown in a previous video. So what you will do is you'll click on add a module here. And before we send this data over to Airtable, we manually create an array. So we'll click on array aggregator. And I'll show you a cool trick here. So array aggregator always needs a source module. So that is just going to be the fill out forms. But notice here, because typically when we add this, we don't have anything here on the right. And this option is basically empty. But now that array aggregator is already connected to a couple of modules on the right, which actually make also recommends doing so, it will give you what is the target structure, what kind of array you are going to create. So here we can select that we want to create an array that can be sent as an attachment to the update record module. So we click on that and voila, it already knows what value the attachments are expecting. So now all you have to do here is map it to a URL. So let's assume that this was the URL that uh, our module is sending. And then for the file name, you can either type out the file name or you can select something unique from here. For example, the submission ID, and then I think that should be it. And then click on okay. And now when we go here, what we can do instead of merging these two, we will merge so we'll do merge and the first one is going to be the array coming from the array aggregator because we manually created it and then the second array is just going to be the attachments coming in from your table so now when we hit okay and try to run this and go back here so far we have two photos so let's go fill again location id one browse and let's select the third photo and there we go let's see this one open let it upload submit and let's wait for it to run. What happened here? So the formula for filter is invalid. Invalid. Please check your formula text. What happened to my formula? Oh, something changed here. So it should be. I see. So it's complaining because now I've attached my fill out to an array aggregator, and I'm not really passing in the the location ID anymore because I'm just trying to show you what to do if you only have the URL. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hard code it here to one for now and now run this again and now let's upload the photo again fill again and this location id doesn't really matter anymore but let's go here and attach this one open let's wait for it to upload and submit and let's see okay there we go so now let's look at uh, Airtable. so voila so notice how we got two images and we got one more and this one has the file name coming in from the fill out submission id so just to recap, what's happening here is that in the end, you need to 
merge an existing array of attachments and the new photo in an array format. If you just add the URL, it doesn't work because you need to give it the file name and the file URL properly in the format that Airtable expects. And for that, we leverage the array aggregator where we create the proper output. So if you click here, you will see the proper array with one collection in it with the file URL and the file name. And then you can use that to do the merge and then send the data to Airtable. So I've shown you two ways to do that. If you already have an array, use that. If you don't have one, create one and then merge it with the existing array within Airtable. So using this, you should be able to update your Airtable record, specifically the attachments field, and add any number of documents or images that you need to add to an existing record. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I will stop here for this one and uh, I'll see you next time.